So, hey guys, welcome back to the Watch With Us channel. Uh, a few days ago, I put a post out on Facebook and a couple of the watch groups asking anybody interested in watches, whether they whether they're YouTubers like this guest, our friend here, I'll introduce in just a second, um, you know, bloggers, collectors, in the industry, whatever it may be. So if you guys are interested in being on the channel as a guest and telling your story and telling us about you, uh, drop me a line at uh, JK at WWU Media, which I'll put in the link, but let's get to it. Sounds good. So I'm here, I am here with Paul Worley, who is the guy who founded the Wristwatch Addiction YouTube channel, uh, as well as Instagram. And uh, Instagram. Paul, welcome to the channel, brother. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. being here. It's awesome. I love right the uh, poster, by the way. Ah, uh, the Ford versus Ferrari. Ford versus Ferrari. Epic yeah. movie, awesome. I've Epic got Ford. a, I've, I've got a very deep love for the Ford GT. Um, yeah. You know the GT40 and the current GT. So, uh, one of my favorite movies, man. Thank you. So you're you're chiming in from Nashville, Tennessee, correct? Nashville, yes, sir. Right on. I, yeah. I'm rocking the Preds hat, which I would say I, I wore. I would say I wore for you, but I happen to wear a Preds hat every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's completely fine. You know, they're not bad, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the weirdest thing having a uh, hockey team in the middle of Tennessee. Like yesterday it was 60. Today it's like 85. So hockey you wouldn't expect, but they've done really well and we love them. They're awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big hockey town. I mean, I, I told you off camera, my wife and I were down there in November and, uh, you know, we were visiting Nashville, and and it's to me, it's a hockey town, and more so than almost any other town. Oh yeah, it's you know we love we we have to love our uh, our football team. Um, it's it's a hard love, <laughs> but <laughs> you know it's it's you know you know the real fan for the football team because clearly you got to be a real fan to stick behind them. I unfortunately am not. I I've always been a hockey fan. I uh, went to a little private school in Nashville when I was a kid and played hockey and uh, was terrible, but envisioned myself doing exactly what they do every week. So, uh, yeah, we, they're awesome. Very they're cool, awesome. man. So let's kick it off with what, what do you have on your wrist? What are you wearing today? Um, so I'm wearing a watch that probably people on my channel are really tired of. It's a, uh, a 351150 Omega uh, Speedmaster, it's not the moon watch. Everybody's like, why didn't you buy a moon watch? Which is exactly why I don't own a moon watch. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's one of the most annoying things in the world. But um, yeah, it's a 90s, see if I can get it a little bit better. It's a 90s uh, model, this one about 96. They made them from 92 to 98. Uh, it's a JDM model. So it was Ooh. exclusively for uh, the Japanese market. Um, and it's an automatic, and it's also a day function uh, Speedmaster. So it's a, it's a value, uh, um, what is it? I think it's a 35, I can't even remember. My, uh, and I've been off work for like the last month, so all the numbers are kind of gone, <laughs> if you can imagine. So you're, you're not in the wristwatch business, correct? Uh, technically, no. So I work for a uh, jewelry retailer. Uh, so we are an AD for a number of um, luxury and larger sort of more attainable brands as well of watches. But that's not our primary focus. Our primary focus is like diamonds, uh, engagement rings, that sort of stuff. But uh, we, we do have a number of, uh, of brands of Excellent. watches as well. So why don't you plug the store? Why don't you plug the store you work at? So technically, I work there. We we all got furloughed back in March due to the COVID thing. Right. Uh, eventually, we'll all be back. But uh, it's uh, Jared. Uh, Jared.com is their website. Uh, you know, he went to Jared. I think everybody's heard that. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> heard that uh, commercial years ago. Uh, I did. I was in the running industry for over a decade as a manager of a running store and a running coach. And uh, uh, I had an offer. I left there to, to go uh, play around with Jules. So right now, on. now I'm at. So, Very cool, man. I, uh, I mean, I, I was in uh, jewelry retail as well for 14 years. I primarily, oh, yeah. I primarily focused on the watch side of it, but uh, you yeah. couldn't avoid doing the jewelry as well. So 
Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I took the job for the watch side of it. Yeah. Um, and then got in and was more fascinated with the other side. So I, I don't know. It, it definitely, um, I find the jewelry end really interesting and I didn't expect it. So. That's great. That's fantastic. So, so tell us about the channel a little bit. What, what do you do on the channel? And what's, what's your, what's your, your angle? Uh, mainly try to lose subscribers. I, uh, I, I really, <laughs> I really don't have a plan. I just do it for fun. Um, I, uh, I, let's see, if I rewind a couple of years, I found a watch at a pawn shop that I was just blown away by. And, uh, I had two or three watch friends. None of them were local. They were from forums or we had a text chat. And uh, I just wanted to tell people about the watch, right? And I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? So I guess I'll make a watch channel. And uh, you can't find that video because it's, it's now on private because it's absolutely atrocious. Uh, <laughs> much worse than the rest. Um, but yeah, I just I wanted to talk about it and I realized, well, okay, nobody I know is actually going to watch this stuff, so I don't have to be embarrassed by it. And, uh, it might actually interest a few people, so I'm just going to keep doing it. And I did it for a couple of years now and, you know, we're at, I think, 1,300 subscribers, something like that. So I guess a few people like watching me. Sure. Um, the average thing is going to be like, um, uh, reviews or unboxings that sort of stuff i don't delve in too much to like the technical because like i said i do it at work and i don't want it to feel like work i want it to be fun you know yeah so i just play around yeah so i i mean i i was checking out a handful of your of your videos over the last couple of days and uh you did one recently on i, I believe it was seven watches that were in movies yeah, yeah. It, it, like I said, I, I've been uh, home with the COVID thing, so not that I have COVID-19, but, but uh, you know, the, the business has got shut down in Nashville other than um, uh, the, necess the businesses that were uh, necessary, like grocery stores, stuff like that. Yeah. So um, I've just been sitting at home watching movies, and I haven't really been wanting to make watch videos because I... I don't know. I'm not buying any because I don't want to spend the money right now. So, uh, it wasn't really there. So I was like, ah, I'm still watching a bunch of movies. And I realized I watched so many movies that um, I was like spending a lot of time looking at the watches and not the movie. And I had never really done that. So I thought, well, that might be a fun, fun video. Uh, and it's, you know, it's been fairly well received. So yeah. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Yeah, I thought it was great. I, you know, I watched a couple of the reviews and unboxings and things like that, and they're fantastic. Uh, excellent quality. You're, you're very charismatic. But then when, then when I watched that one, I'm like, oh, this is a fun one. You know, so I enjoyed <laughs> that. I enjoyed well, that. That was good. The one thing about my channel is it's super random. Like, everything I do is just whatever I feel like doing. Because, again, I'm just doing it for fun. So some people don't like that, but, you know, it, it – it's one of those things where if, if I'm not enjoying doing it, I don't want to do it. Uh, I see a lot of YouTube channels that they kind of just, they get in this formula that's really successful and they just kind of keep doing it. Uh, and I'm kind of bored watching that a lot of times. So I don't want to be putting that out there myself. So you know, you. nobody watches, nobody watches. I like that. I like, I like, so I agree with you. I mean, I'm very friendly with a lot of YouTubers of all different types, you know, many like yeah, yourself, too. you know, who, who do it for the passion and love, but there are some guys out there that it, it, it literally becomes a chore and a job. And at that point yeah. for me personally, I'd be like, well, why am I doing it? Right. Yeah. You know, and, exactly. and then on a personal level, it's kind of funny. I don't really absorb a whole lot of YouTube content. Um, it's, it's, yeah. I don't know why I just, I find myself too busy to do so. And then when I do have time, I've got three kids and it just, it, I don't have the time to do it. Um, yeah. But when I do, I personally like much more like your style where it's like, you, you oh, can tell you're doing it, you're doing it for fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it realism kind of the thing about YouTube or TV or movies to an extent, it, you can tell when people are really trying uh, because they love it or really trying because they're trying to make money. And 
I, I have some friends that, that are YouTubers that uh, I have one that actually does it for a living and there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. Yeah, I think it's know, fantastic. Hour to them. It's sure. fantastic. I could never do that. I'm not, I, I don't have the technical know-how to, to do all the partnerships and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I, you know, more power to them. It's just, this is not me. Stuff. Yeah, no, I dig that. I dig that a lot. So what is, um, what is your main source of what you're reviewing? Are, are, you, are you buying watches, reviewing them, and then flipping them, or people send them into you? I mean, I have done that. I, had, uh, uh, I did a uh, Timex at one point, like a little in the glow that I gave away on the channel, and I've given away a few things on the channel um, where, you know, I've had them come in and looked at it and did a review over it and, uh, and sent it off as a drawing or something or right. another. Uh, but for the most part, they're either stuff that I have uh, or friend watches that have been loaned to me. Uh, I've got some good friends that I work with that have some great watches. And then uh, I have some friends, again, from that, that text group that I've made years ago that, that send me watches. Uh, Scott Keeps Time on Instagram, who's not active at all on Instagram. I keep telling him to get on there again. But um, he sends me watches occasionally. Actually, I have one right here. I don't know. Yeah. It's a uh, box. I haven't even opened it, which is they're amazing. But uh, um, yeah, so I'm about to do a review on it, um, and then send it right back to it. So uh, you know, I have good friends that are they're really good about about hooking me up with stuff. So. That's great. That's great. And uh, so, what got you into watches? What you know? What, what was the what started the whole passion? Well, I, I my first watch was very very uh, uh, young. I was actually one year old. My dad was always buying me stuff way before I could use it. Like I had a, uh, like a big Lionel train set when I was six months old, uh, <laughs> all over the, yeah. Like I've got pictures of like this huge train set in the, the den and I'm like in the, this little cradle and he's playing on the train set, you know? So, uh, but he got me a watch uh, when I was one years old. Uh, I actually have it. It was big, but, um, it's like a little cat in a hat watch. I still have it, uh, obviously, if you want to see it. But um, yeah, that's where it started, like literally from the beginning. Um, but being, you know, being a runner, a coach, I kind of, watches were just tools, right? And they were mainly like smart watches or, or like Garmin. Uh, right. At the time, Nike had their sort of stuff. And that's pretty much all war. Um, uh, Timex, Iron Man uh digital watches that sort of thing and um i was actually shopping for my fiance's uh engagement ring because at the time i wasn't in the industry i was looking around and uh right across the hall from where i eventually purchased the ring was a uh, uh, uh an omega boutique and it's in this uh mall in downtown nashville and uh, even though it's in a mall, it also has like window displays, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this was back, I don't know, a number of years ago when they had the uh, um, steel bezel, the orange uh, Planet Oceans, and they had a, um, a setup of four. They had uh, two uh, time date uh, Planet Oceans and then two of the chronographs, uh, two on steel and then two on the orange rubber. And I just, just stared at it. Right, and I actually took a picture. I've got, I've got the picture still uh, from years and years ago off an old phone. Um, and I just, I was like, those are so cool. Like before that, I didn't care about watches as, as anything other than like just telling time, right? And um, I got done uh, looking, I didn't go in. Uh, I got done looking, I went out to the car and I uh, drove home and I was, can't get that out of my head. So I got online and I, just, I Googled orange Omega watch. And uh, immediately I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, and I sort of put it out of my mind, right? But um, it, it just, it wouldn't get out of my mind. And I kept looking for stuff that was similar. Um, you know, Orient had an orange bezel at the time. It was sort of, hi, it was just sort of similar. Um, and you know, there were, you know, you can find replica watches online too. If you just sure. type in orange bezel Omega. Um, and so there were those and then nothing really like 
clicked as far as like that as good as what I saw, right? Right. So I sort of put it out of my mind, but that drive to have something really cool um, sort of stayed. Um, and from that, you know, I, I worked across from a, um, I don't even remember what the store was, but it was a little, um, like a little blue boutique clothing store and they had like Kenneth Cole watches and they opened a half hour before we did. So I'd go in, I'd buy a shirt or something here and there. And, uh, I started buying these Kenneth Cole watches. Yeah. And at one point I had something like 35 of these Kenneth oh, Cole watches geez. that I had bought. <laughs> and, uh, so that was, that was an epic journey getting rid of all those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, I guess that's kind of where it started. And it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know if you watch uh, Hodinkee's uh, Talking Watches, but the first one with uh, uh, John Mayer, uh, they asked him, this, you know, have you ever bought a watch that, you know, you kind of wished, you know, maybe that wasn't the thing. And he says, uh, yeah, the first 10 or 12 watches. And for me, it was like the first 20 or 30. <laughs> uh, but it was very, very true. Like it, it took me a long time to realize that like, okay, that thing in that window and then this, this huge plethora of boxes I've got is it's not the same thing. Right. No. And if you love that, that's great. Buy as many as you want. But you know, I was trying to sort of like fill a void for something that I really wanted by buying yeah. a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. So I think we all do that, right? Cars yeah. or everything, right? Something. I mean, that's part of the that's part of the fun of the journey of uh, of of your watch passion, you know. You Oh yeah. You learn and, and you learn about yourself and your taste and your styles. And I think it's funny that if you go back and figure what you spent on all those Kenneth Cole watches, you probably got, could have gotten that Omega oh, and then some. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe. No, 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 probably not. Because they, I mean, they were ranging from like, I don't know, forty dollars to eighty dollars. But you yeah. think about that. You spend eighty dollars and forty dollars. You have two of those guys. You know, that's pretty much on the level of some really nice uh, uh, Seikos or you know, a couple of micro brands at that price, even you know, or one micro brand at least. You know, yeah. Um, it's you know, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What, what is your style of watch? Like, do you, do you gravitate towards divers or chronos or, or do you not have one? You, you know how my, my channel is? Um, it's kind of the same way with my collection. It's, okay. it's sort of all over the place. I, I, I call myself a vintage watch collector because I collect, um, I seem to, I seem to veer toward those, but because I also sell new watches at, at the store I work for, um, they're always in my vision too. And, and while I don't really buy many new watches, uh, if they're a couple of years old, you know, I'll, I'll pick them up. And so it, it's kind of an easy mix. It's uh, not easy mix. It was never easy, but um, kind of a balance, you know, a lot, a lot of vintage stuff and a lot of more, more current stuff too. Same with sizes, like yeah. 35 millimeter, 45 millimeter. Like wow. a lot of wow. people can't do that. I um, can. I, yeah, it's 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 getting harder to do the 45. Like I've got the um, um, Bull of a Lunar Chronograph that everybody, every time anyone posts that watch anywhere, you have this huge list of people going way too big, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's a big watch, but I mean, I still wear it. And then this one's what, 38. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm a little all over the place. All right. What's, uh, what's on your radar? What do you, what watches have you been drooling over? Well, actually there's a few that um, I've almost picked up. And then with the, the, the whole uh, thing, 2020 just sucks, man. So I, I'm kind of fire. taking a break. Yeah, it's it's a huge. I actually saw a shirt that had the like a dumpster with flames coming out. It's in 2020. I was like, why didn't I buy that? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I almost picked up a number of times the uh, first gen uh, Planet Ocean and the 42. Um, I I I haven't yet, just simply because I don't know. You know, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here, right? Right. So. Uh, 
while well, it's it's fine and I'm actually kind of enjoying it, <laughs> um, at, it's probably not the best idea to go spend a lot of money on watches. Although, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on watches, now's probably a really good time. Dude, I just saw on like Crown and Caliber, like right before we got started, they have a, uh, a, the, a the black, uh, um, I told you I was, my mind was gonna go blank That's with okay. the numbers. The, uh, uh, well, anyway, the black bezeled um, um, Submariner with date yeah. for like 10 grand, yeah. which, you know, it hasn't been 10 grand in a really long time. And that's, you know, that's a, a, a major company. So it's not like some dude, you could probably find those even cheaper off of a guy right now that really needs money. So, I mean, if you're in the market for one, it's great, go get it. But it's just not me right now. No, I get it. I mean, there's, it's, it's kind of funny because I'm finding that there are, with this whole COVID shutdown and you know, all the jobs lost and everything, there are a lot of people who are home and still getting paid or there are people that are essential yeah. and they're picking up all these extra hours. So yeah, they're, they're in watch buying mode. And then there's other people who are yeah. in much worse off shape or even somewhere in the middle um, who it doesn't make sense. I mean, look, watches are a luxury, right? Like we don't need them. Um, you know, we have our phones yeah. all the time. We've got clocks, but I totally get it. And honestly, my heart, my heart breaks for, for the people, not because they can't buy watch, but for the people who are in bad, bad positions here, you know? Right. You yeah. Know, it's, it, it can be tough. Now, don't misunderstand. I've still been looking and I may actually pull the trick. I'll tell you what I did. I had, um, uh, you know, they, the company was really good to us. We were able to draw unemployment and everything. Uh, and then I was able to make like $370 one week. So I, I, you know, you don't lie to the government. So I, I tell them that I made that $370 and now everything started over. So I've got no money coming in now. So um, I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens with that before I buy anything. But <laughs> next, the, uh, next, next time you lie to the government. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, I'm, I'm too good a guy. I got to be no honest with but the, um, the, yeah, that, that Planet Ocean, it's never really gotten out of my mind. Right so I, I do want to pick that up. Um, I, do like the, uh, I do like the automatic Speedmasters. There's a, um, the Mark 40 from the, the early 2000s. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the solid black with the white hands. Uh, yeah. It's an a annual calendar. I love it. Um, I'm looking at one of those. Um, I... What else? The uh, Speedmaster Professional. A lot of Omegas. Like I think it's obvious Omega is one of the brands that I yeah. sold because it's just it's just kind of you know they drill it into you and you start falling in love even if you try not to. But um, <laughs> yeah, there are yeah. some brands that uh, that I don't care for. But I, I generally that's something else about my channel. Like if I hate something, there's there's a lot of times when something happens in the industry that like everybody wants to jump on because they know it's going to be clicks and you'll, you'll notice that I just don't. Yeah. It's, it, it's not what, it's not what I'm about. You know, I want to, I want people to pop on and have fun. Uh, yeah. even if it's like fun making fun of me, um, <laughs> and not, not hating on other things. So uh, there's a lot, look, there's a lot you can dumpster fire about 2020. There's a lot of dumpster fire watches out there too. Yeah. But if you want, you want to see them on my channel intentionally. Like if it, if it shows up, it was an accident. I realized <laughs> it's a dumpster fire as I'm reviewing it. So and it funny. may not make the light of day. So. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I remember once I, years ago, I wrote for uh, quill and pad and I, oh, did yeah, a, yeah. I did a post, I did a, I did a uh, write up on, I don't know if it was the five or 10 ugliest watches in history. And, and the, the, the whole article was a complete like satirical thing. And, you know, I got so much hate from that article, Yeah, but it was I fun. Think I mean, just ready. They're yeah. Just sitting there ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was comical. I mean, I, my feeling is very similar to you. You got to have fun with what you're doing. And I'm, I'm also very, very against people trashing other people because of what yeah. they like or they're buying and they're owning, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. For me, if, well, if I, some, somebody's buying a watch, I don't care what it is. I'm, I'm glad people are buying watches. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I well, for me, like, I wouldn't have even looked at the, the that Omega in the window and started down that road um, if I hadn't have already been wearing like a, I think 
I know it's crazy because I was at a very high-end jeweler and then was looking in the window of another high-end jeweler for watches. But I think I was wearing a, like a pebble. You got, do you remember those? They were like the first uh, uh, smartwatch. I do. Really they were, weren't they like all silicone? Yeah, yeah, they were like silicone and plastic, and they just had this screen that you could download all kinds of things, but like their users would create them, so like they were terrible, right? <laughs> but they were, they were fun, because you're like, oh, I got a new one, and uh, it was free, and it was, it was fun, but like that was where, that, was, that started it for me, and I, I, you know, people hate on like the Apple Watch, but it's just a, it's just a modern tool watch, man, and yeah. it, it, when that thing breaks, and they get another one and that thing breaks and they have to update it because 20 minutes after they buy it, a new model came out. <laughs> They're going to get tired of it and look into regular watches, hopefully. And then even if it's like, you know, a, an extension tool watch, like a G-Shock. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's, you're in that industry now. You know, you're part of us. So that's, yeah. that's great. I think that's I think. Out. I think G-Shock uh, is like the ultimate gateway drug to watches, oh, you know? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I'll show you. I, I actually put a couple out. because uh, This was this was probably, as I was buying it, I was like, you are a complete idiot when I ordered this <laughs> thing. But uh, I've got the, uh, I've got the G-Shock Square uh, full metal. And it's like, what is it, a thousand percent more expensive than like if you just got it in plastic, but it's yeah. the exact same thing. Um, but I love it. Yeah, it's like and it's I like wear it all the time. That's like five hundred and fifty bucks or something, right? Yeah, yeah, and and the the regular uh, vinyl version, I think it's like eighty nine, something yeah. like that. So, I mean, you do the math, it, it translates to I'm an idiot. But I love it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I got it at a time when they were hard to get, and uh, one showed up on our store's website, and they only had one. So I was like, bye. And then as soon as I bought it, I was like. I just bought a five hundred dollar G Shock that I could get for ninety. Well, you you want me it to blow? Have been dope, but I love it. You want to get blown away, right? Like, so I'm a G Shock retailer with uh with with watch yeah. games. So yeah. that watch is what caused me to call G Shock and say I, I want to carry G Shock, right? And, uh, and I love them. I couldn't get enough of those things. I must have sold thirty of those things in the first two months, um, as many as they can send me. But then I sold the, the titanium versions, which were like. A thousand bucks, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I have one of those on my radar too. That I might have, be a minute. In the in my warehouse now, I have I think one or two left of the camo printed titanium, oh, yeah. which is like yeah. sixteen hundred dollars. So it. then last year, Ricardo from from the Watch with Us channel and I went to Basel, and it was kind of dual fold for me, right? Like I was visiting a couple brands I work with, but then we were doing more press stuff for the channel. And we were visiting G-Shock and they, they were showing us this, uh, the MRG Gassan, right? Which was like a hand, yeah. it's, it was hand finished and hand pounded by a samurai sword maker. The watch is $7,600. So I, I did a video on it. When I got home from Basel, I did a video on that. And next thing you know, I had about six people trying to buy one from me. And I, um, oh, yeah. I could only get one. I got one from G-Shock and I sold it. And it was- You were like, able to get it though. Seven thousand six hundred dollar G Shock. I was like, ooh, <laughs> and it was gone like as soon as you got. Probably before you got it. I could. Well, yeah. I mean, I I, I told the guy. I said I I don't know for sure if I'm getting it, so I don't want to take a deposit. But if I'm yeah. getting one, you got the first one. I ended up selling it to him. A fellow out in Arizona, just a nice guy. He had a wall rack that had about eighty G Shocks in it, and and he had. Oh wow. He had all of them that were like three thousand, five thousand, and he's a serious collector. And, and I could have probably, I could have probably easily, easily sold three or four or five of those things at, at man, seven or eight thousand dollars. <laughs> the people, people tend to, at least that I see that come in and look at like the Omega or the Tag Heuer or whatever that I'm showing up. If they have a G Shock on and they're just like somebody that just likes that G Shock, they almost always kind of apologize for it which I don't understand because like the G-Shot guys are the real deal. Like they probably are more true collectors than most of us. Like yeah. uh, one of the guys on my, uh, uh, my text by the name of James, like I, I, I think he literally has the mall. Like it's insane. Uh, all the, anytime he posts a new one, it's like, when did you get that? He's like, Oh, I've had that for years. It's like, <laughs> when did you wear it? I don't know. Three years ago. Yeah. Like that. But yeah, the G-Shots are so cool. 
Uh, and, and a gateway for a lot of people, like you said. Yeah. Well, the one thing that the one thing that I've always felt about G-Shock is you could be a guy that's into Seiko's Orients or Bulova's or you could be a guy that's into oh, yeah. Patek, you know, Patek Philippe or Audemars Piguet and everybody in between and everybody, they, everybody has a G-Shock or a couple because, you know, you yeah. throw it on, you do construction, you, you know, you're working in the yard, you go on vacation, whatever. It's just an industry. Cool. So it's fun. It's very and, cool. You know, from, from the coaching standpoint, these days too and not to not to hate on garmin because it's a great company they do great car stuff they do great watch stuff for the athletic community but like i was always doing the garmin so i had everything right there you know but these days we carry our phones literally everywhere and the phone does all the gps tracking so really you know for mountain biking and running leisurely that i do these days instead of coaching like it's it's G-Shock and, and a phone and and headphones, right? Yeah. And I don't need all that on the wrist. I just have that G-Shock with like the countdown timer or, or the stopwatch or whatever I'm trying to do. And uh, quite frankly, it works just as good, if not better. Yeah. So yeah, they're cool. awesome. What is the uh, what's what's the future of the channel look like? I mean, do you have any bigger plans? Uh, aside you know, from losing, aside, aside from losing subscribers. <laughs> You know, that's the goal. Get down to zero. Uh, I, uh, Scott's going to be difficult. He was my first follow. And, uh, uh, you know, he's probably going to stick with me for a while since he keeps sending me watches. But um, <laughs> I, I think I can get rid of him. Uh, the others should be pretty easy. Uh, just going to keep talking. Uh, no, I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, no. I, I, you know, I've got grand schemes for it. But, but in reality, you know, um, I don't, um, just recently I, um, I did the, uh, AdSense thing. I hadn't done that. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try to make any money off of it. And then I finally, I turned it on and, uh, uh, you know, that's literally the only income from it and it's hardly anything. Yeah. Um, but it's enough that I can get, you know, a couple of little moderate to low price pieces to to play around with and pop open and stuff i I did a thing a while back uh that was like i think i called it like what's behind the dollar or something i literally just popped off the case back because people are afraid to do that they don't want to ruin the the waterproofing or they don't want to mess up their watch or whatever so uh, i would pop the back off some watches and just say here's what you got um which is very enlightening. If you if you've never just taken a random watch and popped off the bag, it's always eye opening, <laughs> um, and a lot of times they're really disappointing, even for some of the luxury brands. But um, which I guess why display backs are so popular these days. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, I did that, and that seemed to be popular. So I'll probably do a few more of those unboxings. Um, it's funny because for me. I, I'm still fascinated with the sort of, I guess you call it mid tier, like the, 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 you know, I'm not, forget about the, the crazy $30,000 watches, right? But, but I'm still fascinated with the Rolexes and the Omegas and the Tag Warriors and the, uh, you know, stuff like that. And that's kind of where I'd like to just always look at, right? But the clicks just, don't seem to be there. It's like, uh, to give you an example. Like, I'll post, like the, um, you know, we were talking about G-Shocks, the regular Casio, the uh, uh, yeah. World Timer, the Casio Royale, as people call it. Um, anytime I post this thing, it goes crazy. Like, yeah. and it's what, a $25 watch? So, and I love it, and it's probably actually the watch I wear the most, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so where I would probably like to take it is, is probably legitimately going to lose subscribers. You know, it's 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 weird with YouTube because you you do the, do it because you like it, but then you also want it. You want people to watch it because that's why you do it. So it's a it's a balance. I, I don't honestly have a plan. It's kind of like my watch collecting. It's like I like that. I think I'm going to do that today, yeah. and uh, it it usually either is really successful or tanks. There's no yeah. real in between. And, um, you know, you just go on to the next one. Yeah. I think, I think that's, you know, uh, I spoke about this in, in a different interview I did, but I, you know, with another YouTuber, I think 
the big misconception about YouTube is a lot of people think it's really easy until you actually do oh, it. It's hard as yeah. hell. Is there anything um, you want to talk to the viewers about? Tell them anything. Do you want to, uh, you know, why don't you plug definitely where to follow you? Okay, so um, if you do want to add to my subscribership instead of uh, help me lose it, um, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's wristwatch.addiction. Um, because somebody already had wristwatch addiction and then uh, deleted their account. So now it's wristwatch dot addiction for me. Uh, and then on uh, uh, YouTube, it's wristwatch addiction. Uh, funny enough, there was already a wristwatch dot addiction on YouTube that's no longer there. But that's neither here nor there. So they're, they're different. Uh, wristwatch dot addiction on Instagram, wristwatch addiction on YouTube. Uh, if you want to email me, uh, it's wristwatch.addiction at gmail. I'll be glad to talk to you about anything. Um, yeah, anything. Cars, right watches. On. And I'll, I'll put links to all those uh, in the description below. Yeah. And I want to, uh, I definitely want to thank you so much for taking some time to hang out and chat with oh, us. Oh, yeah. And, Absolutely. Uh, we'd love to have you back on. So uh, we'll have to do this again. I have so much going on right now. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it's just, I, I've never heard anybody say they want to lose subscribers. That's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm, if I'm being honest, uh, I don't. I know. Uh, I, I do have a giveaway of a, a watch. Um, I, I'll actually show you if I have, I have this one. This is a this is old Nuvex. It's a, a annual calendar from 69 to 91, so it doesn't exist anymore, the right. annual calendar part. But... Um, I found one of these at a uh, pawn shop, not this one, a gold model. And I fell in love with it, but I didn't want a gold watch. So I bought this one, and now I have the gold one. So I'm actually giving away the gold one once I get to 1,500 subscribers. So if you guys want to go and subscribe to my channel, you might, you might win a watch. Um, all you have to do is be a subscriber of my channel and my Instagram, and then I'm going to do a few things on Instagram to actually pick a winner. So, um, but that's... You know, that's, that's in a little while because right now, for every subscriber I gain, I'm going to try to lose three or four. So. I love we'll it. What I love it. So, so you're going to hold off on giving it away. <laughs> 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 Very cool. So, guys, definitely go over, subscribe to Wristwatch Addiction, try to win that watch. And you do giveaways on a regular basis, I noticed. Uh, you know, not, I wouldn't say regular, but I do try to give back. I mean, I, like I said, I, I have a real career, so I do it for fun. Yep. And, um, yeah, I, a lot of, a lot of the things I'm learning is, um, now I'm not wealthy by any means, you know, I save and then I purchase, but, um, a lot of people think they can't ever start a collection. So I like to, I like to do a little something I've done. I've done a watch roll in the past, a couple watches, a watch box. Uh, you know, I'll always do something. It may only be once a year, but it'll be something. Excellent. Very cool. So, again, thanks so much, man. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, for those of you who uh, are watching this, definitely go over and check out Paul's channel and his Instagram. In addition to that, if you have any interest in getting on uh, the channel and telling your story like Paul has, you know, certainly, as I mentioned before, reach out to me at JK at WWU Media. Again, that'll be in the description below. So, Paul, take care of yourself. Uh, hope, you, hope you're enjoying more movies during the, during the shutdown there, and hopefully Nashville opens up soon enough, man. Yeah, I, actually, we just uh, got our uh, stay-at-home extended, so uh, more movies, I guess. So uh, look yeah. for another one of those. Well, I know, I know my <laughs> wife. I know my wife and I have plans to get down and uh, stay near Lower Broadway again once uh, once society yeah. opens up. So we'll have to get together in person and yeah, maybe definitely hit me up. Knock knock back a couple of beers and maybe do a live video or a, or an in person Absolutely. video. Absolutely. All right, sounds brother. good, man. Thank you good so much. You, we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.